and I'm so excited. I'm excited. God, am I excited. We have a very exciting morning this morning because we have a new piece of kit turning up. And we're not big new pieces of kit kind of people. We don't really do kit. But this thing, this thing is a game changer. It is next level. And I'm so excited. The eagle-eyed of you might have actually worked out what this is by now, but I'm not gonna spoil it by telling you. You're just gonna have to wait and see. But it's at the gate, so I'd best ring it and let it in. Check it out, look at that. Beautiful. I was not expecting these things to turn up yet. There's been a bit of a jiggle around because of different things that are going on with importing and whatever else. So it's meant that our machine has turned up now rather than mid-March onwards, which I'm excited about because that just means it's gonna be here ready for spring. So when we get spring grass growth, we can get in fertilizer, biologicals, whatever else. But we've got to go and get the muck fork to lift it off because it's not 100% balanced without the wheel kit because we've gone for a 1200 with a wheel kit so the muck fork being wider we can we can balance it up with straps so we're gonna go lift it off oh i'm excited and i don't do kit i don't do kit but this is this is cool this is really cool Not small tyres, are they? So they want cable time, don't they? Yeah, if so they don't flick up. Oh, you Do you want it up, up a bit? Up a bit. It's tight, they shouldn't have painted it. We can always rock this, though, yeah. can't we? That's the joy of a strap. Oh, come on, guys. She's about there. They put too much paint on it. Lift her a little bit, Jim. Just lift it. Yep. It's going, it's going. There we go, there we go. Now we're. So, uh, you put the pin in. Yeah. This this way round, the best way. Uh, like a bit more of it. Oh, somewhere there. Wiggle it. There we go. She's in. Next one. So, yeah. Bit. Bane of my life, these linchpins. I'm sure they give me arthritis the amount of times I've had my fingers in them. Look at that one, was easier. Less paint on this one. Yeah. Keep going. Whoa, back back a bit. Your, your way a bit. There. That's it, we're in. We want to put right. the uh, jockey stand wheel jockey wheel down. One, two. Yep. Lovely stuff. You could smuggle people in, innit? Yeah. You, you get two or three of you in there. Like the, the older ones that has the impeller in it. Yeah. You get you to change that. <laughs> you know, what sort of answer is that? What? How have you got? It says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know what this machine is by now, where, where the hell have you been? This is a Tomefert, so it's a foliar fertilizer spreader, but it is so much more than just a fertilizer spreader. Those of you who have been watching the channel for a while will know that we have had the demo machine 
three times now and done various things with it, spreading lime, dirty water, fertilizers, all sorts of different things. And we've been so mega impressed by it that we've decided to purchase our own. But this is a little bit different to the demo machine. The demo machine is a 1000 and this is a 1200. So this is a dedicated tractor drawn unit. As you can see, we've got big flotation wheels. We've got a tank, which is upright rather than horizontal and we've got this big draw bar on the front but otherwise the principle is exactly the same now peter's had to make a bit of a run for it because we've got an incoming storm and he needs to get back to ireland and he's got a few bits to do on the way so he's gone and uh he's going to be coming back in a couple of weeks to really just get the thing up and running so just do the final last couple of bits of adjustment so that we can have it ready for spreading in the spring but nonetheless we've got it all up and it's kind of it's pretty much there or thereabouts ready now and um god am i excited to use it so if you've never seen one of these before you're probably thinking what's the difference between a foliar fertilizer and a granular fertilizer and the best way for me to explain it is to probably head to the whiteboard so let's go and do that foliar fertilizer is a little bit difficult to get your head around when you first try and learn about it because it's different so coming to the whiteboard is probably the best way to explain it and it's so important i even bought new pens i hope they're worth it how about we do this so we've got a bit of a plant here and firstly what i'm going to do is i'm going to explain how prilled nitrogen works so you're kind of normal nitrogen you just throw out the back of your spinner you know what like, prilled nitrogen is like it's like those little balls you throw it out your spinner it kind of comes like in little circles and it lands on the ground and it'll just be like dotted along the soil surface like this and what has to happen is you have to have some moisture in and around the soil maybe a little bit of rainfall maybe some moisture already in the soil to create a reaction which then dissolves this particle into the soil so there has to be a bit of a reaction that takes place there and then what happens is you lose efficiency in that reaction and then there has to be another reaction which takes place in the soil which then puts it into the plant for the plant to then take it up through the roots and use it to grow and via that process you generally tend to lose between 40 and 60 percent of the nitrogen that you apply so you're kind of throwing away about half your money all the time so you're losing always about 50 percent of your nitrogen when you're using a foliar feed however you'll put that droplet straight onto the leaf and the leaf is made up of little pores so on the leaf if you get a microscope and you zoom right right in there's little tiny gaps in the cell walls kind of like little dots with gaps in between either side of the leaf wall and what that allows is it allows this liquid to go straight into the leaf so it goes in through those gaps in the leaf which means that the plant has a really efficient use of the nitrogen because you don't have to go through this whole process of getting it into the soil and then using the soil and the microbes in the soil to then get it into the plant via the roots and get it into the leaf you just go straight to the leaf and this is actually around about 93 percent efficient so you're kind of gaining 43 percent efficiency every single time that you use it now what that means is you can use loads less nitrogen and still get the same amount of growth so what we're going to probably look at doing is using 15 to 20 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare with every application and just going over and feeding the plant. The other benefit to using foliar over prilled nitrogen or liquid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen is different, I'll explain that at the end. The other major difference is that when you use a foliar and you go straight for the leaf, bypassing the soil as a vector for transfer, what you actually get is an improved soil health. All this activity, this dissolving and putting it into the soil has an adverse and deleterious effect on your soil health. And what actually happens is it stops the plant root growing because the plant doesn't need to mine for nutrients. So if the plant's not looking for nutrients, these roots kind of just stay very shallow. So it leaves you susceptible to heavy rain periods because those roots will just sit in wet ground or drought because those roots will sit in really dry ground. When you use foliar, you feed the plant directly with the nitrogen without using the soil, which leaves the soil in better health. And then these roots will mine for the other nutrients, meaning that they will extend down 
into the soil, creating a more drought tolerant plant, but also creating better soil health, which will allow for vertical fissures for water ingress when you have periods of heavy rain. And they also therefore will store the water better. So when you have periods of drought, you'll have water in the soil, which your plant can use because it has better root structure. And then it can utilize that to keep green when you have pretty much no moisture in the topsoil. So not only are you improving the efficiency of your fertilizer system, but you're also improving the health of your soil and your plants. And it works in symbiosis and just creates a much better grazing platform with better quality plants, better quality soil, better quality roots, and that transfers naturally into having better quality animals. So it is a proper game changer, but it takes a bit of getting your head around. This might seem kind of complicated. It is a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Hopefully, I've explained that as well as I possibly can. Now I said I would explain liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen works in the same way as granular nitrogen. You just don't have this process of dissolving to get it into the soil, but it still uses the soil as the vector through which the plant is grown. But your efficiency will go from about 50% to 65-ish, maybe 70. So it's still not as efficient as foliar fed, but it is more efficient than prilled granular nitrogen. Don't get confused, foliar, and liquid are two completely different things. Anyway, let's head back to the shed and I'll give you a bit of a tour of the machine. Right, so now you've got a bit of an idea of what this machine can do, I'm just gonna walk you around it a little bit and hopefully show you how this thing works. So up here on the top, we've got the big lid. So we can put fertilizer straight out of the bag into that big lid and we'll fill this up with water. And what will happen is it will circulate, dissolve that product, whether it's urea, DAP, um, sulfate of ammonia, all sorts of things. Whatever it is, we put it in there. We put it in with biologicals, like we can put molasses in there, humate, seaweed extract. We can put C90, sea salts. We can do all sorts of things. You can lime, lime all in at once, just shook the lot in. And then we spread it out through the nozzles. Now it comes with various different types of nozzles. There's three different sizes on here. We've got a, a, a 20, a 30 and a 40. So that's just a different size of nozzle hole, which means we can spread smaller, finer particle stuff up to larger particles with this or spread at a higher volume of water. Now this machine is actually a tractor mounted machine with a towing kit on it. So here is where you would normally mount your three-point linkage and then they put this big drawbar on so that you can actually just tow it behind and then we put the flotation wheels on which are on those stub axles that you saw us putting on earlier and the reason why we've gone for a towed one is because down the yard it's very narrow and when you have it mounted the boom arms have to be slightly out so that they go either side of the cab and i was very conscious that i might just clock it on a wall and I don't think that would do it much good. On this machine at the back, we've got LED lights. We've also got steps. So we've got the little step here to get up onto the top so that we can look inside the tank. And the controls are slightly different to the 1000, whereas we've got controls kind of here, here, and here, whereas in the 1000, they're all at the front in one place. It's a two way cell machine. So there's a way cell down there and a way cell down there. And then up inside the tank, Inside the tank is where the magic happens. Down there you can see that's kind of where the inflow of water comes, which circulates in the tank. And the tank is shaped in such a way that it creates the best circulation and flow to hold things in suspension so that we can spread them. And here's obviously all the pipe work and various different things that we need for dumping back in. There's a filter that sits just down there, which is inside that hole there with a pressure gauge. Here we have the weigher. The weigher we can see from the cab, we can spin that round when we're filling up so we can see it when we stood at the back. There is a fill pipe, which is what you use to fill it, or you can also use it as a, a volume hose. That sort of connects on under here and wraps itself round so that it's always on the machine when you want it. And then we have the filter for the back and we also have the volume washer, which I'm really, really excited to get using. Another subtle difference between this machine and the 1000 is this has hydraulic booms rather than electric, whatever they are, electric rams going in and out. Just here, you can see this little triangle here and that triangle is a brake back mechanism. So if you catch it on a post or something like that, it lifts up on the spring and breaks back, which I'm not gonna lie, I think that's bloody genius. I didn't even know that before. I was always conscious about catching it on something, but now I'm still very conscious, but less worried. Another thing I love on this machine is this little nylon uh, rest that you get for the boom arms. And the other cool thing on these boom arms, if you want to fold it up tighter, these boom arms just lift up and you can get them out of the way. 
bloody amazing. It's got super simple hydraulics. So we've got one hydraulic double acting spool, which is for the booms out and in. We've got a dump, which is the big one, that thing, massive. And there's an ingoing sort of spool for hydraulic pump because there's a big pump on the back, which is what drives everything. And that's, that's about it. We, then we have a cable with the lights. We have a cable with the on off switch. Super simple, um, but God, what a hell of a machine, and it is built to last. I mean, just look how strong this thing is. You can also get a crane. We can get a crane. You bolt it on there, and then you can lift up the fur bags to load them in. A crane. We haven't got a crane on this one, but I like the idea of a crane. I can't, I can't justify buying a crane, but I really like the idea of a crane. I think it looks so cool. All your extra bits of cable and whatever else nicely put away. I mean, everything's so neat and tidy, how it's all made. Absolutely love it. And you know the other thing that they've given us, which I think is just like, phew, you never get this. No matter how much money you spend on a piece of kit, you never get this. They give us the balls for if we want to take the drawbar off and mount it. They give us the linkage arm balls. You could spend 50 grand on a fancy piece of kit and you'd still have to buy the balls afterwards. That thing doesn't even need them because it's towable. And they gave us the balls. That's, that's nice. That's just niceness. 